Financial markets have price movements that repeat over and over again. These movements are called waves. Elliott wave theory is a comprehensive and complex topic, taking practitioners months and even years to master. Despite its complexity, there are some elements of Elliott wave that can be incorporated and may help improve your trade timing. So I'll try to keep this very simple and I will break down the wave theory into small pieces. First concept Impulsive and corrective waves. Ralph Nelson Elliott, the trader who developed the Elliott wave theory, proposed that trends in financial prices resulted from investors' predominant psychology. He found that swings in mass psychology always showed up in the same recurring fractal patterns or waves. Elliott discovered that stock index price patterns were structured in the same way. He then began to look at how these repeating patterns could be used as predictive indicators of future market moves. Now, prices move in impulsive and corrective waves. Knowing which wave is likely underway and what recent waves were will help you to forecast what the price is likely to do next. An impulsive wave is a large price move and has associated trends. An uptrend keeps reaching higher prices because the moves up are larger than the moves down, which occur between those large up waves. Corrective waves are the smaller waves that occur within a trend. So knowing this, it's advised to trade in the direction of the impulsive waves because the price is making the largest moves in that direction. Impulsive waves provide a better chance of making a large profit than corrective waves do. You can use corrective waves to enter into a trend trade in an attempt to capture the next big impulsive wave. The ideal way to trade is to buy during pullbacks or corrective waves during uptrends and ride the next impulsive wave as it takes the price higher. Also, you could sell during corrective waves in a downtrend to profit from the next impulsive wave down. The idea of impulsive and corrective waves is also used to determine when a trend is changing direction. If a price chart shows big moves to the upside with small corrective waves in between and then a much larger down move occurs, this is a signal that the uptrend may be over. Since impulses occur in the trending direction, a big move to the downside, which is bigger than the prior corrective waves and as large as the upward impulsive waves, indicates the trend is now down. If the trend is down and a big up wave occurs, that is as big as the prior down waves during the downtrend, then the trend is now up and you should look to buy during the next corrective waves. Second concept, trend and pullback price structures. Elliott found that when an uptrend is underway, it typically has three large upward price moves with two corrections. This creates a five-way pattern, impulse, correction, impulse, correction, and another impulse. These five waves are labeled wave 1 through wave 5 respectively. The uptrend is then followed by three waves down, an impulse down, a correction to the upside, and then another impulse down. These waves are labeled A, B, and C. Elliott also found that these movements are fractal, meaning that the pattern occurs on small and larger time frames. For example, the first impulse wave higher within an uptrend on the daily chart is composed of 5 waves on an hourly chart. Also, corrective waves are composed of 3 smaller waves if viewed on a smaller chart time frame. Just as impulsive and corrective waves help determine when to enter trades and in which direction the trend is moving, the price structure can do the same. Assume there was a big move to the upside an impulsive wave, then a correction is likely to follow. That correction to the downside will often unfold in three waves, a drop, a small rally, and then another drop. You can use this to improve trade timing by waiting for that second drop. Getting it right when the price starts to drop for the first time is too early, as another drop is likely coming. Also, once there have been three big moves to the upside, the uptrend may be nearing completion. An impulsive wave to the downside would then confirm that the price is likely to head lower and the uptrend is indeed over. Third concept is the correction size. 
So your trading plan should be to buy on corrections during an uptrend or selling on corrections in a downtrend. And it is helpful to know how large the typical correction is. Based on the 5 wave pattern, wave 1 is the first impulse wave of the trend and wave 2 is the first correction. Wave 3 is the next impulse, followed by a corrective wave 4 and impulse wave 5. Based on the research of Elliott, wave 2 is typically 60% the length of wave 1. For example, if wave 1 advances $1, then wave 2 will likely see the price drop by about 60 cents. Wave 2 is followed by impulse wave 3. The third wave of the trend is often the largest, usually much bigger than wave 1. Wave 4 comes next and is typically 30 to 40% the size of the wave 3. For example, if the third wave rallied $2, the price is likely to drop 60 to 80 cents during wave 4. The same concept holds true for a downtrend. These are averages seen over many trades and trends. Corrections may be smaller or larger than average on any single trade. Yet, even having an approximate idea of how big a correction is likely to be can help improve your trade timing significantly. There are three important rules in labeling waves. Rule number one. Wave three can never be the shortest impulse wave. So wave three should be the longest of the impulse waves, but it cannot be the shortest which means that the wave 1 or 5 cannot be longer than wave 3. Also, the high of the third wave must be higher than that of the wave 1, and if it's not higher, you have to start your recount. You need to remember that impulse waves are meant to be making progress, not slowing down. Therefore, if the price doesn't exceed the high of wave 2, then that means that there is no progress. Therefore, you have to start your recount. Rule number 2. Wave 2 can never go beyond the start of wave 1. In other words, wave 2 shall not retrace more than 100% of wave 1. If a break occurs below this low, you need to start your recount. Rule number 3. Wave 4 can never cross in the same price area as wave 1, meaning that wave 4 can never overlap wave 1. So the low of the wave 4 cannot go below the high of wave 1. If that happens, you need a recount. Now we got 3 golden rules, but we also have 3 Elliott Wave guidelines. First guideline. When the wave 3 is the longer impulsive wave, wave 5 will be almost or approximately equal to wave 1. Second guideline. The structure for wave 2 and wave 4 will alternate. If wave 2 is a sharp correction, wave 4 will be a flat correction. If wave 2 is flat, wave 4 will be sharp. And the last guideline. After a 5 wave impulsive advance, ABC corrections usually end in the area of prior wave 4 low. Elliott wave trading is not that easy to understand at first. As a matter of fact, the easiest part is the theory part. The hardest part is the application part. That's why I advise you at first to utilize the concepts I've talked in the beginning of the video. Impulsive and corrective waves, trends and pullback price structures and correction size. The most important thing to remember is to only take trades in the direction of the impulsive waves and take trades during the corrective waves. Look for trade entry signals once the price has corrected the average amount. The correction isn't likely to stop exactly at the percentage levels discussed before, so taking trades slightly above or below the described percentage level is fine. Also consider keeping track of each wave in the overall price structure. For example, after a 5-wave pattern to the upside, a bigger 3-wave decline usually follows. Watching the direction of the impulsive waves will signal potential trend changes and that signal is stronger if combined by a 5-wave impulse pattern or correction pattern ending. These Elliott wave concepts will improve your analysis skills and improve your trade timing, but it's not without its own problems. As I said before, the theory can be complex to apply, as it isn't always easy isolating the 5-wave and the 3-wave patterns. Elliott wave is not a trading technique, 
There are no specific rules of entry or exit, nor there isn't one right way to use it in trading. As a result, the use of Elliott Wave has been avoided by many traders, not due to the lack of understanding, but because of the apparently subjective nature of how it may be applied. Nonetheless, there are many traders who have been successfully traded with Elliott Wave patterns. This video was basically an introduction to Elliott Waves, and I tried not to complicate things, but in the future videos we'll go deeper and we'll talk about some advanced Elliott Wave concepts that can be applied to day trading and swing trading. As always, if you learned something new and found value, leave us a like to show our support. Subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to stay notified when we upload new videos. Until next time.